Today I'm going to be talking about quick field analysis for superconductors. Uh, an outline of the talk, quick field um, superconductivity basics. Uh, and then we'll talk about specifying superconductors in quick field. Then we'll discuss superconducting plates and hollow superconducting shells, including inductance calculations and flux trapping in hollow superconducting shields. Then we'll discuss superconducting magnetic levitation. Uh, then I will discuss the nonlinear BH characteristics of superconductors. Then we'll talk about coupled magnetostatic and stress analysis of superconductors. Finally, we'll end with superconducting versus permeable magnetic shields. A basic overview of superconductivity. Superconductivity is a macroscopic quantum phenomenon where superconducting electrons are described by a single wave function in the bulk of the superconductor. Here psi of r is the superconducting wave functions of condensed Cooper pair electrons. And another characteristic of superconductivity is we have zero electrical resistivity below a critical transi transition temperature T sub C. And Quickfield will also be modeling the uh, external magnetic fields that are expelled from superconductors. This is known as the Meissner effect. Also, the superconducting state is abolished by sufficiently high magnetic fields and currents where we can model that using nonlinear BH characteristics in quick field. So London's equations predict that magnetic flux is expelled from the interior of a superconductor except for a very thin layer, about 50 angstroms. So we say that the superconductor exhibits perfect diamagnetism as illustrated here uh, where you see a superconducting region and the magnetic field lines are expelled and they do not penetrate the interior region of the superconductor. So we'll be modeling uh, the Meissner effect in quick field as well. It's possible to model superconductors in three modules inside of quick field. Uh, the first that we'll be working on today is magnetostatics. However, it's also possible to model superconductors using AC magnetics and transient magnetics mo modules in quick field. So specifying superconducting regions. The appropriate boundary condition is zero normal flux density on simply connected superconducting surfaces. That is superconducting surfaces that don't have complex top topology with holes um, or other features. This condition can be applied implicitly by choosing the relative permeability of the superconductor to be nearly zero. For hollow superconductors, it depends on whether the superconductor is cooled in a zero field or cooled in a finite magnetic field. So let's go ahead and look at a problem in quick field using boundary conditions to specify the superconductor. In this problem, I have uh, a solution region described by the four boundaries that you see here. And we're going to establish a uniform field inside uh, of these boundaries here. And there's a, a single edge here that's going to be our superconducting disk. OK, so the air region here has a, per, a permeability of 1. This is a relative permeability of 1, and that's for air. Um, the edge labels, the bottom edge here, is assigned zero tangential magnetic field. So the, the magnetic field lines will be coming in normal to this boundary here, as well as the top boundary also has zero tangential magnetic field, whereas the left is assigned negative 1 Weber's per meter. And the right boundary has 1 Weber per meter. So we just assign a opposite vector potential boundary conditions on the left and right sides, and that'll establish uh, a uniform magnetic field. The superconductor, the central boundary here, has zero normal flux. So the magnetic field lines will be expelled out around this single boundary here. Later on, we'll model finite 
thickness. For right now, I'll illustrate this, the boundary condition. So we can solve the problem. It's already been solved once, but we go ahead and refresh it here. So the problem has been solved, and we are looking at the the flux lines as they're uh, deviated by the superconducting boundary here. Now, in magnetostatics, the magnetic field lines point in the direction of the field lines that we can illustrate here. So th these are the, the vectors of the magnetic field. In electrostatics, electric field lines are perpendicular to lines of equal potential, so it's it's different than in electrostatics. Also, we can look at the the magnitude of the flux density, and you can see that there is a region of screen magnetic field in the in the central region, whereas the magnetic flux is enhanced at the edges of the superconductor here. And if I want, I can look at individual values of the field. And we can see here above the, the superconducting disk, it's approximately um, 0.1 tesla. And in this region, it's roughly 2 teslas. So without the superconducting disk, it will be 2 tesla everywhere in this region here.